Hello friends! If you've been following my channel, then you know that I really wanted to show you a completed Gokstadt Viking longship today, but alas, I decided I should actually focus on my job, which I'm actually being paid for and, uh, and not this, but alas. Anyway, never fear! I'm still working on it, so uh, it should be coming out if all goes according to plan next week. Uh, so there is that. In the meantime, should you waste your time on this airplane? Well, only if you want to build a really fun kit and make an excellent looking airplane. Now, I don't think that anyone outside the Royal Aircraft Factory, the, the firm that actually built this plane, would have argued that the BE-2C was a great plane. It's certainly not a sexy beast like the Camel, or gracefully nimble like the Newports, or even sleek and deadly like an Albatross. But it was a very stable platform for reconnaissance. But of course, that was its biggest problem. This plane was stupid stable, like there are stories of the crew getting killed and the plane flying itself until it ran out of gas and then gliding itself down and landing itself in a field. Now that would be great for a civilian plane, but when you're trying to dodge bullets and the aircraft just wants to fly straight and steady, that's a problem. That's one reason for the horrendous casualties in the RFC early on. It also had other design features that were rather strange, like the pilot in the back seat and the observer up front, where his vision was obstructed by the wings. However, it was the plane they had, so those brave British airmen soldiered on with stiff upper lips. There were attempts to make it better with upgraded versions and different ones, but it would never match its more capable successors from other firms like the Bristol Scout, for example. Of course, it did have some success as a reconnaissance plane, and when fitted with rockets and special ammunition, it was used with some success against the Zeppelins, too. So with all that said, why do I think you would have such a good time with this particular kit from Airfix? Well, quite simply, this is the perfect model for someone who has never built a biplane before, and it makes a very attractive finished product. Airfix made it easy and simple, yet detailed and visually interesting. The kit usually comes with two options for markings. Mine had a photo reconnaissance plane from the western front, which had like mostly a cream color, and the other was a trainer from Scotland, and that one has checkers, that's the one I chose to do. I know they've made other versions, including ones that would have fought the Zeppelin Raiders, and I certainly hope they keep issuing new variants too. The quality of the model was superb, there was almost no flash, the fit was perfect and the surface detail fine and intricate without being overly delicate. With that said, there are a few recommendations I would make to the purchaser of this kit. First off, if you get one with the checkerboard pattern and decide to go for it, you will want to plan way ahead of time. The checkers are decals, but they only have the black portion, so you will need to paint white underneath the checkered area before applying the decals. Also, I would plan to apply the checker decals before attaching the upper wing, the landing gear, and the tail skin. The checker decals go underneath or below these pieces, and it's pretty much impossible to apply the decals under these parts once they are actually on the plane. One of the best parts of this kit is that it comes with a special guider part for the wing struts so that you can't help but get them positioned perfectly. I've said for a long time that attaching the upper wing on these World War I kits is a sort of rite of passage, but if you want to cheat and make it easy, go for this kit. The instructions also give out details on how to rig the model, which is something I definitely recommend doing. It looks fine without, but the rigging makes the model so much more interesting. But don't use thread. Find yourself some black lycra of 40 to 70 denier or see if you can find a product that is listed for 172 scale models. I've seen others used Ushi van der Rosten, which looks great, and I use Infini Models Rigging Lycra, which is basically the same thing as Ushi. Overall, this is an amazingly fun kit. It would be perfect for anyone looking to get into World War I kits, and it has all the quality and detail for experienced modelers too. Mine won first prize in its class at a model convention in Reno, 
and I'm certain that it was mostly the kit's fault, not mine. My biggest recommendation, by the way, is that you buy two of these kits, because as soon as you finish one, you will want to buy another. And, surprise, surprise, I actually bought two also. I bought this one later on because I didn't know that you were supposed to buy two because they're so much fun. I'm really excited to do this one because, um, gosh, the first one I built was so much fun and this one is going to be really cool as well. I'm planning to do a uh, build with this in the very near future. And I'm also planning on doing quite a bit of scratch building, upgrading, diorama making, and I'll actually even go over the best and cheapest materials for doing the rigging on this. I mentioned the Lycra, but there's some other options that you've got that you might want to consider as well if you don't plan on dropping $15 on a little tiny spool of, uh, of uh, uh, stretchy stuff. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And like I said, I'm planning on finishing and unveiling my Gokstadt Viking ship for next week. So don't forget about that one. And until then, I wish you all joy in your lives, and I hope to see you again soon.